we have more than a thousand volunteers. We have more than a hundred student fellows. We have built a movement in NJ5. It's a progressive movement. We've consolidated this power. And it's time that we actually have a leader who reflects what most people in NJ5 want. Awesome. Awesome. And so, you know, if I am a voter, I'm watching this. I'm in between and I've got like two days to make a decision um, because election day is in two days. <laughs> what would you say to that voter on why they should vote for you? And also, you know, we have a strange ballot. Where can they find you on the ballot? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you where to find me first. <laughs> in Bergen County, you're going to find me in, in column three, real Democrat, real change. Um, Arthi Kreivik, so look for me in column three. It's, you know, just, just a little bit to the right of, uh, of the establishment column. In um, Passaic, Sussex, and Warren, if you're there, you can actually go to my website, arthiforcongress.com slash vote, and I have sample ballots from all four counties, and you can look to see where everybody is on there, including where I am. Um, and much easier to find in Sussex, Warren, and Passaic, actually, than I am in Bergen. Um, so... Every vote by mail, all of that kind of stuff. Um, look. Why should you vote for me? Because we're in the middle of multiple crises. What we need are actual leaders who are going to advocate for and implement policies, right? That are based on science, that are based on data, that are actually helping people. And they're, and they're, they're committing to a change, right? That most people in NJ5 want. I will tell you this, before we shut down, you know, face-to-face, -face, door knocking and all of that, when, we, when I went to events in NJ5, Every single event I went to, unsolicited, somebody came up to me with a healthcare horror story. Unsolicited, sometimes two, sometimes three, right? This is an MJ5. People were talking about how much they were afraid of being bankrupt, um, what they were afraid of in terms of, the, uh, of um, rationing their insulin. One young woman had told me the story about this. It's only gotten worse since the pandemic. We know this, right? We know about the needless lives that are lost that my opponent actually said, you know what? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Upfront Now in partnership with Eyes on NJ News. You can follow Eyes on NJ News on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and at their website at eyesonnj.org. All handles are at Eyes on NJ. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the line, the infamous line in New Jersey, the ballot line, and how it favors incumbents and establishment Democrats. Well, this week, we wanted to take some folks who decided to run off the line and shirk that system and give them a highlight and ask them some questions. So today, we've got two special guests. We've got Artie Kravick, uh, a candidate out of NJ5 running against Josh Gottheimer. And we've got Hector Oseguera running in NJ08 against Albio Series. So let's take a look at RT's campaign video, and then we're going to get into some questions. Our communities have been ravaged by the pandemic, record unemployment, small businesses that may never reopen, and families struggling to get by. While our own congressman bails out Wall Street and predatory lenders, we need leaders who will fight for us. I'm Dr. Arthi Kreivik. I came to America when I was 11. My mom worked at the supermarket. My dad was a bookkeeper. So when I got my PhD and became a scientist like I always dreamed, I knew I needed to give back. I've worked to cure diseases. I've mentored kids in STEM. And I've helped expand green energy and grow the economy in my community. I know that the American dream is worth achieving but it's only getting harder for working families. During this crisis, New Jerseyans have stepped up to help one another, but that's not enough. Every second our congressman spends bailing out Wall Street and enabling Trump's racist agenda is time not spent helping New Jersey's working families. We deserve better. In Congress, I will fight for healthcare for all and paid family and medical leave. Rebuilding our economy with green jobs and protecting our most vulnerable. I'll fight to lift up our working families, not corporations. And unlike my opponent, 
I'm not taking any corporate PAC or fossil fuel money. We deserve a representative who fights for us. Awesome. So let's bring forward Dr. R.T. Krybeck and ask her some questions. Hi, thanks, Imani, for having me. No, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So let's hop right into it. Where is CD5? Like, what counties does CD5 entail? Yeah. So much like most districts uh, across the country, especially in New Jersey, it's gerrymandered. So it's this top strip in North Jersey. It includes uh, parts of Bergen County. Uh, two towns in Passaic County, and then parts of um, Sussex and Warren County. So it's this top strip that's an upside down L, if you kind of just think about it from roughly away from the George Washington Bridge to all the way to the Pennsylvania border. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and you know, there is kind of some tension in the Democratic Party right now. There is one sect of the wing who thinks we should be moving full throttle towards uh, certain initiatives like Green New Deal, Medicare for All. And there's another sect that kind of, well, really wants to keep things mostly the same. They want to kind of give opportunity, which means, you know, if you're wealthy, you can get it. Um, they want to be buddy-buddy with corporations, uh, things of that nature. So my question for you is, why are you running against another Democrat? Because some people look at that and say, listen, there are plenty of problematic Republicans we have to get out of office. Why run against a Democrat? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and that's a valid question. You should be asking that. Um, and I think that's why these primaries are so important, right? Um, because we need to have those conversations. Look, it matters what problems our congressional leaders are solving. It matters who they're standing up for. And it matters where they're planning on going, right? So we can't have change. We can't actually care for the people if we're not actually going to have congressional leaders who are about the core democratic values. So when we're talking about inclusion, when we're talking about equity, when we're talking about making sure that we are solving those problems for the people, we are living in times that include crises upon crises upon crises, right? We have a pandemic crisis right now. It's a public health as well as a economic crisis that is looks like it's just getting worse and worse. You know, we're poised to be worse than the Great Depression. Um, we have a public health crisis that is disproportionately affecting black and brown communities and communities, um, low income communities. We have people, rent was due. Uh, we have people who have been trying to choose between buying groceries and figuring out how to pay rent and worried about being evicted. We have people who are worried about health care. And on top of this, we have the climate crisis that's been here for a long time. So when we're looking at that, we have to, un we have to ask, what are our congressional leaders doing? What are our political leaders doing? And if they're not actually solving problems for the people, if they're not actually advocating for the po policies that we know are popular across America and across New Jersey, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. The government is by the people for the people at the end of the day. Um, so my opponent thinks that if you act like a Republican, if you uphold Republican values, if you vote against the party 204 times, in his three and a half years, then that should be enough to keep the seat as a Democrat. I disagree completely. I couldn't disagree more with him. I think the way you win, the way you keep winning is actually when you're working for the people, which means to lean into our core democratic values, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, this is why I'm refusing corporate PAC money. This is why I refuse fossil fuel money. What we need are leaders who are actually going to lead um, on behalf of the people. And you can't do that when you are an investment for corporations. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's uh, interesting you brought up, you know, how really conservative Josh Gottheimer is um, mm -hmm. voting with Trump. I mean, something like outrageous, like like over 60 percent of the time or something that's like that's just like outrageous. Why are you doing this much? And you still have the D next to your name is, yeah. you know, beyond me. But, you know, some people might look at him and say, that's just the district, man. Like, you know, that district is pretty conservative. He has to do that in order to keep his seat or he's going to be ousted. What would be your response to those folks who are saying, you know, she's wonderful, but this district just kind of isn't going to go for that. What do you say? Yeah. 
Oh, well, that's completely untrue. We already know our district is blue. We've known it for a long time. And so people who say that, it's just really establishment, it's really politics of fear that are being fed to them, right? I'm not about that. I'm here about actual change. And this is not just, you know, foo-foo positivity. This is actually, I'm here to do the work that the people want us to do, right? At the end of the day. Look, our district is blue. We have a registration advantage of 13,000 more Democrats than more than Republicans that are registered right now in NJ5, right? This is all across. We're talking Bergen County, we're talking Warren, we're talking Sussex, we're talking, we're including those two towns in Passaic. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> when you look at when Josh won in this gerrymandered district, he won in 2016 with two points. Then there was a seismic change because of the Trump election. We had so more people, especially women, women like me, who woke up, who started uh, a lot more than they had before, who stepped up, who organized, who marched, who had grassroots organizations. We have 22 uh, grassroots organizations under the Indivisible umbrella. We knocked on more than 30,000 doors for him in 2018, holding our nose reluctantly because we wanted to keep the seat blue. He won by 14 points. You don't go from this change of two points to 14 points without this district being blue, right, at the end of the day. And that grassroots energy, that strength, that's not here for him right now. It's there for me. These are, we have more than a thousand volunteers. We have more than a hundred student fellows. We have built a movement in NJ5. It's a progressive movement. We've consolidated this power. And it's time that we actually have a leader who reflects what most people in NJ5 want. Awesome, awesome. And so, you know, if I am a voter, I'm watching this. I'm in between and I've got like two days to make a decision um, because election day is in two days. <laughs> What would you say to that voter on why they should vote for you? And also, you know, we have a strange ballot. Where can they find you on the ballot? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you where to find me first. <laughs> in Bergen County, you're going to find me in, in column three, Real Democrat, Real Change, um, Arthi Kravitz. So look for me in column three. It's, you know, just, just a little bit to the right of, uh, of the establishment column. And um, Passaic, Sussex, and Warren, if you're there, you can actually go to my website, arthiforcongress.com slash vote and I have sample ballots from all four counties and you can look to see where everybody is on there including where I am um, and much easier to find in Sussex Warren and Passaic actually than I am in Bergen um, so yeah please take a look arthiforcongress.com slash vote uh, and it also gives you instructions about you know how to vote on July 7th if you don't have your vote by mail all of that kind of stuff um, look why should you vote for me because we're in the middle of multiple crises. What we need are actual leaders who are going to advocate for and implement policies, right? That are based on science, that are based on data, that are actually helping people. And they're and they're they're committing to a change, right? That most people in NJ5 want. I will tell you this, before we shut down, you know, face-to-face, -face, door knocking and all of that, when we when I went to events in NJ5, Every single event I went to, unsolicited, somebody came up to me with a healthcare horror story. Unsolicited, sometimes two, sometimes three, right? This is an MJ5. People were talking about how much they were afraid of being bankrupt, um, what they were afraid of in terms of, the, uh, of um, rationing their insulin. One young woman had told me the story about this. It's only gotten worse since the pandemic. We know this, right? We know about the needless lives that are lost that my opponent actually said, you know what, in the beginning, I don't blame Trump for this. I don't blame anyone American for the pandemic crisis. I know squarely who to blame. Of course it's Trump. Of course we knew what was coming. And of course he muzzled scientists. In fact, when North Jersey asked us both separately to give grades to Trump's coronavirus response, I said F and I listed all the reasons why. He said, I'm not into grades and waffled. If we don't have somebody who understands the pain that our that our people are going through and are continuing to go through, this is not the leader that we need. We need somebody who's going to be in there implementing policies based on science, based on data, and who are actually gonna help people to make sure that we have a sustainable and more resilient um, economy as we go forward. Thank you, RT. It is always a pleasure. Thank you for your bravery and fighting the good fight. And, uh, you know, Tuesday, Tuesday is going to go amazing for you. <laughs> oh, by the way, audience, I said two days. So surprise, we actually film on Sunday and go live on Monday. Surprise, it's Sunday. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> when this airs, you actually have one day. So be sure to get out there and vote for RT if you live in CD5. Thank you so much, Artie. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk soon.
Take care. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Bye-bye. All right. So next up, we have Hector Oseguera. Again, he is running for CD8. Uh, and let's check out his video. When you cry out for justice, is anyone listening? Across the country, people are asking, do our leaders represent us? When there's lead in our water. Lead levels have been found in many Newark homes. When ice terrorizes our neighbors. Ice, ice cracked down and kicking a high gear. Down. When luxury high rises go up as fast as your rent does. Is anyone listening? I'm Hector Oseguera, West New York's native son. My father, Hondureño, mommy, Dominicana. And I'm running to represent the people of the 8th District. Because what good are high rises if people can't afford to live in them? What good is representation if you're not being heard? The political bosses may think they're in control, but around here, we run things. We put food on the table. We create our local businesses. We keep this community running and we know we deserve better. Better than double the national uninsured rate better than to be priced out of our communities and kicked out of our homes. Better than absent politicians oblivious to our daily struggles. Because we need a leader who isn't bought by luxury developers, who believes that healthcare is a human right, not a tool for profit. Someone to act now on the climate crisis with a Green New Deal that avoids the next Hurricane Sandy. A leader to stand up and fight back for our immigrants, not bought by the private prison industry. During this mail-in primary, let's show the machine bosses. Mail in your vote for me, Hector Oseguera, by July 7th, because a vote for me is a voice for you. I'm Hector Oseguera, and I approve this message. All right, that video was beautiful. Let's bring on Hector, see what he has to say. Hector, what's going on, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me on. Good, 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 thank you for coming. All right, so same same kind of line of questions that we had for RT. Why, uh, sorry, sorry, first, where is CDE? Where, where is that? So CD8 is what I call the Hispanic gerrymander. We actually encompass four different counties. Uh, it's mostly Hudson County, except for Sea Caucus, um, the Western parts of Bayonne and parts of Newark and Jersey City, which I'll explain in a little bit. Um, we take in Elizabeth in Union County. We take in Newark and Belleville and Essex County and Fairview in Bergen County. and. I call it the Hispanic gerrymander because you, if you live around a lot of Hispanic people or if you live in a Hispanic community, you are probably in my district. And if you don't live in a predominantly Hispanic community, you're probably not in my district, uh, which is exemplified by Newark and Jersey City, which are literally cut in half between the predominantly Hispanic and the predominantly black sections. And uh, they cut out Sea Caucus out of Hudson County because there's not a big Hispanic population there in Sea Caucus. So this is mostly Hudson County, but if you are in North Jersey um, and you live around a lot of Hispanic people, you are almost certainly in my district. Mm -hmm. Got you, interesting, very interesting. We need to actually look into that on in a future episode. Yeah. Um, so same question for you. You know, Right now, there's a lot of infighting in the Democratic Party. There's one sect of folks that wants to go more left, the other sect of folks who just want to stay where they are and not do much. Why run against another Democrat? Why not unseat a Republican? So what I've come to realize is that a lot of the Democrats that we elect here, is, they're not all that different from Republicans. And so if I were to unseat the incumbent, I would be unseating a Republican in all honesty. Um, really we need representation and what i've come to realize is that left and right don't really mean anything in today's political landscape there is no left and there is no right there is whether you fight for the grassroots and you're fighting for the people or do you fight for these uh corporations and special interests who donate a lot of money and actually make the issues 
in this district a lot worse, specifically when it comes to gentrification, when it comes to affordability in healthcare, when it comes to uh, funding our public education, when it comes to ICE detention centers. Uh, my opponent is on the wrong side of history on all those issues. When it comes to the Green New Deal, my opponent is on the wrong side of history when it comes to those issues. So unseating this corporate Democrat would be as good as unseating a Republican, especially when you look at my district, which is a plus 27 for Democrats. So essentially, there is no possibility that a Republican would ever be elected here. So moving our district to the place where the most of the people in this district are, I think would be a tremendous improvement. My opponent would be a great Democrat if he were running in Kentucky or Alabama, but this is very far from a conservative area or a red uh, state or district like Kentucky or Alabama. And um, honestly, to unseat this incumbent would be just as good as unseating a Republican. Mm, I hear you, I hear you. Um, so it's interesting you mentioned that, you know, politics are really not really left or right. It's about like who's for the people and who isn't. Uh, recently, Albio series claimed that he's actually more progressive than you are. What do you say to that? Like, do you think that that's true based on anything in his political history, um, based on what he's promoting now? You know, why, what would motivate him to say something like that? And do you agree? Um, so you could say that Albio is more progressive than me if you just ignore everything he's ever said and done. Um, it's, it's ridiculous for him to try to say something like that. And what it shows is that he believes that being pegged as a progressive is a good thing in this district, right? And if voters evaluate our records and our history, uh, there's no honest way for him to say that he's, number one, a progressive to begin with, and certainly not for him to say that he's more progressive than me. So he is pro-ICE detention centers. He's never met a foreign intervention he didn't like. He's funded bar by a far right-wing um, pro-annexation Israeli uh, PAC called the Desert Caucus. He's not for Palestinian rights. So he's also not for Medicare for all. He's not for a Green New Deal. He's not for getting big money out of politics. So it's really hard for me to find what issue he's a progressive on, period, and certainly difficult for me to find any issue on which he could be even close to more progressive than I am. Got you. Got you. Okay. And now... You know, this is the final, final push. As of the airing of this show, people will have one day to vote for you. Why should they vote for you? And where can they find you on New Jersey's strange, strange ballot? So first, uh, where they can find me, by a very strange um, coincidence of history, in Hudson and Union County, which is our most densely populated um, areas of the district, you can find me on column A, which is not something that a progressive challenger can almost ever say. And so if you live in Hudson County or if you live in Elizabeth and Union County, vote column A all the way is what I'm telling you, um, because that's where voters will be able to find me. If you live in Essex and Bergen County, which is only Fairview, you can find me on column B. Um, if voters want to know why they should vote for me, it's because currently I am with you on all the issues that matter to you. When it comes to gentrification, I have a very robust affordable housing plan. When it comes to healthcare, I am for Medicare for all. When it comes to the environment, I'm the only candidate fighting for a Green New Deal. When it comes to any single issue that you care about, certainly when it comes to political corruption, I am the only anti-corruption candidate on the ballot in our district. And so if the voters care about any of those issues, if they think that housing is unaffordable, if they think that healthcare and the environment are important issues, you should absolutely vote for me because I am the only candidate in this race who has credibility and who is standing with you on those issues. Awesome. Hector, always, always a pleasure. Good luck this Tuesday. Keep working hard. We got folks, we gotta get out there, vote for Hector, do what we can. Thank you so much, Hector. Thank you for having me. All right, folks. So that concludes our show for today. You know, like we talked about before, New Jersey <clears throat> has a strange, strange ballot. If you want a candidate to win, 
need to go on that ballot, find their name, and vote for them. It doesn't matter what big name person is above them. If Cory Booker's above them, if Joe Biden is above them, that does not matter. It doesn't matter when it comes to policy. It doesn't matter when it comes to making your life better. What matters is their platform. So what you have to do, and you only have, as of the airing of this show, one day to do it, look up those people like RT and Hector. Look up the people running in your district who aren't actually under the line where Cory Booker may lay or where Joe Biden may lay. And look at their platforms. Are their platforms better for your life? Are their platforms the type of platforms that are really going to get you more jobs? Are their platforms the type of platforms that's really gonna get you quality healthcare that you don't have to pay half your money for? Go back and watch our episode about me getting healthcare because let me tell you, you will pay a lot of money if you do not vote for the right person. Okay, these are the type of people that we need to get into office. Do you wanna die in eight years because the climate, you can't even go outside and before you catch an asthma attack or what have you? Is that what you want? You want the sun to give you cancer because we're not doing anything about climate change? No, you don't. You want good candidates. And I'm sorry to say it, folks, but there are just some people who are sitting in office because it was their turn. And they don't do anything for you, for your children, for the people you care about, for your neighborhood, for your community. And they really, really should be. So that concludes this episode of Upfront Now with your host, me, Imani Oakley, in partnership with Eyes on NJ News. Again, if you want to follow Eyes on NJ News and keep up with everything that they do, follow them on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, IG, at their handle, at Eyes on NJ. And you can also check out their website at eyesonnj.org. Until next week, folks, see you soon.